tonight on KGW News. Advocates hope after seeing this. Schools will finally add seatbelts to their buses. And lawyers say a local police chief tried to frame this Portland man for a crime he didn't commit. It was motivated by race and they came out of their jurisdiction on all lives. This one hurts. An injury puts Damian Lillard out of the All-Star game. But first, the only local woman diagnosed with a new coronavirus. Take it all in stride. It is what it is. I can't do anything about it, so I may as well make the best of it. We check in with her after almost a week quarantined in Japan. You might remember seeing Rebecca Frazier on the news last week. The Forest Grove woman was on the Diamond Princess cruise ship when she tested positive for the coronavirus. New tonight, another 44 people on that ship have come down with the illness, bringing the total to more than 200 passengers. Our Mike Benner video chatted with Rebecca tonight. She's been hop hospitalized since late last week. Mike, how's she doing? You know, Dan, she's doing really well. In fact, a cough has really been the only indication that she's even sick. We know that nurses are regularly checking her blood pressure and temperature, but she's not hooked up to a bunch of wires like you might think she would be. So overall, she's in pretty good spirits. There's like a little TV stand to uh, my left. You can kind of see it there. Rebecca Frazier gives us a peek inside the Tokyo hospital room that she's been confined to since late last week. When like so many others on board the Diamond Princess cruise ship, she tested positive for the coronavirus. As soon as the person knocked on my door that day, I was like, oh no. Rebecca has reason to be optimistic, though. She tells us she's been feeling pretty good. In fact, doctors tested her again just minutes before our interview. It's a swab that they swab um, in the back of your throat, so it's a little uncomfortable, but it just takes a second, and then they send it off to the lab. If this test and a second test Thursday come back negative, Rebecca will be discharged and eventually reunited with her husband, who's in quarantine on the cruise ship. Until then, Rebecca finds ways to pass the time. I've been communicating with like friends and stuff uh, via text, so I do that. Um, and then just watching a lot of streaming, Netflix, Prime, things of that nature. Isolated in a hospital room thousands of miles from home, it would be easy for Rebecca to feel sorry for herself. But that's not her style. Like, I'm not the type of person who's like flail my arms, scream and holler, you know, pitch a fit. What am I doing here? What's happening? I'm, I'm pretty even keeled. And in the end, that may play a major role in Rebecca beating the deadly virus that has already sickened more than 45,000 people across the globe. I think it's important to remind people that I'm not going to bring this back with me. Nobody's bringing it back to the States. So there's no reason to fear or panic that I'm going to bring it home. Um, I'm, I'm staying here until I'm cleared. All right, speaking of getting home to Forest Grove, Rebecca does have some cats. She's excited to see them and cuddle them. She says she's also craving some American food, most notably a hamburger and a taco. So hopefully all of this happens sooner rather than later. Dan? It's great to see her doing better. I'd like to FaceTime with her husband as well, see how he's doing stuck on that cruise ship for all this time. Thanks for the report tonight, Mike. There are some new developments tonight in the case of a Portland man wrongfully arrested. He won a $600,000 settlement with the Westland Police Department. And court papers say that Michael Fesser went to his boss to report racist behavior by his coworker. But Fesser says instead of dealing with the complaint, his boss called his buddy, the chief of police in West Lynn. Court documents show the then chief, Terry Timmius, ordered his officers to go to Portland to investigate Fesser for theft and to build a case around him. Fesser was even arrested, but the case was later dropped. This is what Fesser told us yesterday. I want um, change change in um, that police force, that community, and for them to understand that they can't do this to another black man, and especially not me or my children or someone else. I mean, it has to be brought to the light. 
So after all the details came out in the settlement, the Clackamas County DA's office now says they want to investigate this. And we heard from the new chief of police in West Lynn, and he talked about all the changes of the department since this happened, said the only officer left on the force that was associated with the Fesser case is now on paid administrative leave. Now we can also tell you Oregon's governor is also calling for the state's public safety standards department to look into this too. And looking ahead to tomorrow, homeowners cleaning up from flooding in eastern Oregon will be getting some help from the Red Cross. They're organizing a resource center that will open at the Pendleton Convention Center tomorrow. Anyone affected by the flooding can get help finding housing, clothes and insurance. The recovery has just begun for many homeowners. Houses that were filled with water are now filled with mud and debris. We met with Rick Lagore last weekend. He lives in the Riverview Mobile Estates and he showed us all the water that flooded his house then. On the phone today, he said he and his neighbors are just trying to figure out what to do next. I mean, it's like, it's like everything you had and now it's all gone. And you're going, what do I do? Everybody's going, what do we do? What do we do? You know, just like you, if you had everything and next day you know, you get up and everything's gone. What do you do? That's what they're, they're just walking around here kind of in a daze trying to figure it out. Oh, you just feel for those folks, don't you? Anyone whose home was damaged in the flooding should make sure to report it to the Umatilla County offices by noon tomorrow so they can get recovery assistance for them. An Uber driver is in jail in Medford tonight accused of sexually assaulting a passenger. Now this is an especially disturbing case that's sure to fuel the rideshare safety debate. Here's what police say happened. Friends called an Uber to take a 21 year old woman home late Saturday night. 51 year old Antonio Gonzalez Salinas picked her up. When she didn't show up at her home, her friends tried to call her, and at one point, police say the driver picked up the phone and told them that he was having trouble finding the house. Friends were eventually able to track her phone and found her and Gonzalez Salinas two blocks from the destination. The driver took off, and Fred say the victim was crying. Detectives arrested Gonzalez Salinas yesterday and say they found the victim's phone in his house. He's charged with kidnapping, sex abuse, and attempted rape. Uber says they have banned him from the app and are cooperating with investigators. Now to get you caught up on tonight's other headlines, OSHA is fining two companies for the boom lift accident that killed two men at the Pickathon Music Festival this past summer. The Occupational Safety Administration found Pickathon and the subcontractor Guildworks didn't follow safety rules. Most notably, an alarm was disabled on the lift that would have warned workers if they were on uneven ground. The workers, Brad Sweat and Brandon Blackmore, were dismantling part of the setup after the August festival when the boom lift tipped over. The so-called nighttime nailer who spread roofing nails across several Oregon City streets will have to spend a month in jail. Brent Wilson was also arrested two year, uh, was also sentenced rather to two years probation. He'll have to pay over $2,000 in restitution and will have to go through anger management. Investigators say Wilson threw nails on the road about 50 times over the last two years. The man accused in a shooting at a retirement community in Vancouver last year has died. Deputies say 80-year-old Robert Breck died yesterday from natural causes. He was charged with shooting three people inside Smith Tower last October. One man died, the other two survived. There is encouraging news tonight for some students at Concordia University. It comes after the school announced this week it will close at the end of the spring term. Catherine Cook is here with what students learned today. Catherine Laurel students in Concordia's accelerated track nursing program will be able to finish their degrees in Portland. Those students are based out of Concordia's new Columbia River campus in southwest Portland. Concordia's Minnesota branch said it would take over Portland's accelerated nursing program and keep it going. A spokesman tells us current and future students will seamlessly finish their schooling on time. Concordia's traditional track nursing students and all other students at the school are trying to figure out what they'll do next. It still doesn't feel real, you know. It's really the worst situation we could be in, ha being halfway through nursing school and having your program just shut down. This is the reason that I picked the school. It's the reason that I turned down others or didn't go to WSU to cheer and the reason that, you know, it's just, it was all because of nursing. And the fact that it's not even happening is what's really frustrating. 
Several local colleges have reached out to Concordia students offering to transfer their credits and in some cases give them scholarships. Concordia's closure impacts 5,000 students and more than 1,500 staff members. Dan. Still such a shock. I feel for all those people, Catherine. Thank you so much. So the defense has rested in the max attack trial. Jeremy Christian's lawyer wrapped up their case today shortly after he told the court that he will not take the stand. Here's his explanation. My biggest issue is if I end up going to prison, I'm open to, you know, I'm in prison. I testify. There's two, it opens up a can of worms. That's my main decision, possibly. Okay, so that, the, that's my biggest issue. Personal reasons, that that's the reason you're making the that's, choice. That's my main reasoning. And there, 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 are other, there are other reasons. So I've Christian has to admitted to in the past to stabbing okay, three people on a Portland Max train in 2017, killing two of them. He pleaded not guilty by reason of mental disease or, defe or defect. To support that plea, his lawyers questioned a forensic psychologist who diagnosed Christian with autism spectrum disorder. It's a developmental disability that can cause significant social, communication, and behavioral challenges. Prosecutors argue it's not a severe enough diagnosis, though, to explain Christian's actions that day. Now that the defense has rested, we will see a rebuttal from the prosecution over the next couple of days. We're expecting closing arguments set for Tuesday. When we come back here tonight, the prognosis for Damian Lillard after an injury tonight took him out of the game and put a major damper on his all-star weekend. Well, our weekend is going to have a major damper on it as well. It's called rain, and there's quite a bit of it on the rain. Not so much tomorrow. We got a little bit of great sunset to share with you, too. But there are several storms lined our way, and we'll talk about the mountain snow that's coming as well.